Hello, I'm Paul Weston, and this video is about false positive uh, COVID infection test results, which sounds pretty tame, but in reality is of crucial importance because they reduce the true number of positive COVID infection results uh, by somewhere between 90 to 100 percent. In other words, pretty much all of them. And the reason for this is because the inbuilt false positive error count in COVID testing, which is huge, uh, is not being subtracted from the raw number of tests returning an apparent positive infection label. Uh, by this, and I'll, I'll just get this out of the way quickly, I mean that the total number of tests returning a COVID positive result are actually made up of a number of true positives and a number of false positives. And in order to establish the scientific accuracy of the overall test results, the false positives must be subtracted from the overall figure, which leaves a new, much, much lower figure of true positives. And if this was done today, the number of true positive test results are reduced by 90 to 100 percent. I know it sounds hard to believe, but it's very much the case, um, backed up by Professor Carl Hennigan of Oxford University Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine, and I'll leave a link to that below. And I think we can agree this is pretty important uh, considering our country is being locked down only because of the alleged positive COVID test results and nothing else. It's not deaths, it's not case fatality rates, it's not the overwhelming of the NHS, it's just dishonestly presented and deliberately distorted positive test results. Now all testing for a virus or a pregnancy or a cancer, you name it, has a built-in error percentage. And this is because the process of testing is subject to human error, uh, to coding error, to machine error, to freezers at the wrong temperature, the age and deterioration of the material being tested, etc, uh, etc. Et and most of these error percentages are known. But as of today's date, the error rate for potential false positives in COVID testing is not known. And one government document suggests that the lowest error rate for false positives is 0.8%, with a higher rate of 4.3%, so a mean average rate of 2.3%. And I'll use the average 2.3% in the following calculations. But I would point out that even if the lowest 0.8% is used, it still demolishes the government lies about large and rising infection figures. OK, so the government has carried out almost 20 million tests to date. See the yellow, uh, see the figure highlighted in yellow, uh, which have returned 423,000 positive results, again highlighted in yellow. These are then presented to us as the genuine number of positive infection cases in order to terrify us. And this is an absolute scandal. It's a criminal act, in fact, because they haven't been adjusted for the 2.3% false positive error count. And I know it sounds small, but it's anything but, uh, because it's magnified massively, as the 2.3% applies not to the uh, 423,000 results figure, but to the 20 million people tested figure. An inbuilt error percentage uh, only applies to the total number of people tested, not to the much lower test result figure itself. And this is crucially important for obvious reasons. 2.3% of 20 million is 460,000. That's 460,000 false positives, a figure far higher than the 423,000 unadjusted overall positives, uh, which suggests there are no true posit positives at all in terms of statistical relevance. So why is the government lying to us and why are they doing what they're doing? One answer is criminal stupidity. I've seen several ministers, including Hancock, interviewed by Julia Hartley Brewer, who asked them about the false positive figures issue. And they seem to think that if 10,000 tests returned 110 positives and the false positive error percentage was 1%, then the said 1% applies to the 110 positive results, therefore reducing the number to 109, a matter of little importance in the overall scheme of things, but they're wrong. It applies to the 10,000 tested, and 1% of 10,000 is 100, meaning the true positive number is only 10, not 109. 
This is hugely important, obviously, and to get it wrong because of crass stupidity or deliberate design is now a matter for government inquiries and the criminal courts. And I'm quite serious about this. This is a scandal, the scandal of the century, and it's more than capable of bringing this government down. The mainstream media don't want to acknowledge this or talk about it, but they'll be forced to do so shortly. And then this criminal government is toast. Uh, Julia Hartley Brewer of Talk Radio is the only mainstream media journalist talking about this, God bless her. So this video will end with clips of her showing government ministers to be utterly clueless or malevolent liars. Uh, take your pick. Uh, actually, quite apart from their scientific ignorance, the overwhelming impression they all give is of loathsome smarminess and arrogance. And what's with the Tony Blair glottal stop they seem to have picked up. Uh, anyway, before the clips start, I will just say please study the links about false positive research I put underneath this video. Uh, I was going to include some of it in this video, but it would have made it far too long. Uh, also, please spread this video, download it, and spread it far and wide, because it is sure to be memory hold. And do please subscribe to my channel. Anyway, here's Julia exposing the ministers. No, one last thing. Julia, if you see this video, perhaps you might ask uh, Health Secretary Hancock next time you interview him precisely what percentage figure the government is using uh, to allow for the false positive error count and whether the numbers produced by this percentage figure are being subtracted from the overall positive test figures. If you do and you keep at him, you'll finish his career there and then. But you need, you do need to fully understand the science on this before you use that knowledge to skewer him. Anyway, here's Julia. You say the number of people in hospital has doubled. The number of people who've tested positive for COVID who are in hospital has doubled. Um, one of the, uh, the great sort of uh, spikes we've been seeing is in Bolton. How many patients are currently in hospital with coronavirus in Bolton? Uh, I haven't seen the figure, it's, but it's I two. have... No, that's not true. It's so true. that's what the official figures state. Uh, no, well, that's not true. It's much higher than that. I've seen the I've seen the shape of the curve. I don't know the exact shape figure. Of the curve. I can get okay, back to. let's talk about shapes of curves because we know that coronavirus uh, cases are going up. But again, lots of people, including Carl Hennigan, professor of evidence-based medicine at Oxford University, uh, who has uh, helped to influence some uh, some changes in government policy recently, has pointed out these aren't cases of coronavirus. These are people who've tested positive for the test. Um, what is the false positive rate on the testing that we're doing in the community? Under 1%. It's under 1%. Um, yes. Even around under 1%, do you know the exact rate? Um, it's Well, under 1% means that for all the positive cases, I... the likelihood of one being a false positive is, is, is very small. Yes. I, I, um, I, I, is there any scrutiny in the Cabinet of someone saying, hold on a minute, some experts are pointing out, and there's no statistical evidence these people are wrong, that nine out of ten of the of the positive cases we are identifying may actually be false, and we're basing an entire policy on false data. Yeah, I don't think we're. Uh, I, I don't think that's correct. I don't think we're uh, basing our entire policy on on false data, as as you've suggested there. Uh, I'm slightly confused by your figures, but I'm going to go away and check them because you also said that Matt Hancock said it's probably one percent. Uh, this is no, but I'm so, so sorry. This is my policy. Ten. This is a policy that's being made by people who don't understand the statistics and the science. Well, I can. You, I, well, I'll do. You, you, you I've got your. I've got your phone number. I will send you the document to explain yeah, to you what this false positive two paradox things, is. There, haven't you? You've said to me. Uh, that Matt Hancock said it's one in 100. You've told no, me it's nine out no, of 10. These no, nine. this is the entire problem, Mr. Shapps. This is the problem. People don't understand what this means. If one, if the false positive rate is below 1%, 1%, that means that the oh, when you have a very low prevalence in the, in the country and lots of people who aren't, aren't having symptoms are getting tested, this is, pre, this is really basic statistical stuff. It means well, that I'll the false positive you. rate is nine out of 10. I'll tell, I'll tell you what I'll do for you, Julie, because I have spoken to um, the uh, chief medical and chief scientific okay. officers of the weekend. We were briefed by them uh, in uh, last week's cabinet. I will specifically raise this point Thank if you, you send me that text. Kept, I, I will. And please.